guys and welcome to the Verve Commercial Power Rack Review. Okay, so before I jump into our thoughts on the rack, I'm going to run you guys through the specifications of what we're dealing with right here. So we've got a 75 mil by 75 mil upright. We've got three millimeters thick steel or 11 gauge, and we've got west side hold spacing from about the halfway mark. In addition to the three by three construction, it also runs five eighths hardware. So that means it's really good for using other attachments that the Verve do not make, but we will get into Verve's attachment selections later on. In addition, we've got a 122 centimeter outside post to outside post design. We've got 106 centimeters deep and we've got 230 centimeters tall. So it's a really nice size rack, not overly beefy, but you can beef it up if you want to extend it or if you want to throw a lap pull down attachment onto it later on. So one of the biggest selling points of the Verve Commercial Power Rack is the fact that it comes as a complete package. So that means it comes with four band pegs, you've got your four weight plate storage trees, you've got your pin and rail safeties, I'll be showing you those in a moment. It also comes with J hooks as well as your multi-grip pull-up bar and your standard pull-up bar. So plenty of different variety in the box and you don't need to pay extra for any of it, it's all in the price and that is something that is pretty unique that not many companies do in terms of their commercial power rack offerings. So let's talk about price. So I got mine for $1,299. Currently they're doing them for $1,499. So there has been a bit of a price increase since I got mine five months ago, but you can also get it in a range of packages, which is actually how I got mine. I'll talk a bit about that in the next segment. But I do really recommend this rack for the price. You won't find much better in terms of your specifications, your build quality, your customer service, and your overall experience with the rack on a day-to-day -day basis. So now that all of the specifications are out of the way, time to actually jump into the meaty stuff, the review. And first of all, we're gonna talk about customer service because often customer service is something that lacks massively when you compromise on price, really in anything, and especially in gym equipment. So I've had a really good experience with Verve. Uh, two times they helped me out once I bought the rack and once I also got my shipment. First of all, when I bought the rack, I had everything in my cart and I sort of added everything individually. So I had a bench, a bar, plates, the rack, the mono, the flooring, uh, a deadlift jack, a weight plate storage. So I sort of bought everything at once and I actually rang him up um, and had a chat to him and I actually managed to save nearly $750 just from calling up because they were able to put it in a package that did me a better price. And that is something I really, really love about a company when they actually go out of their way to help you to save money. So that was a fantastic experience first and foremost. Then when I got my order in, that big bulk order, I actually had uh, three sets of my plates missing for some reason, I don't know what happened there, but. I rang them up, I think it was out of hours as well. I think I went straight to the owner's uh, personal phone or the phone that he had listed there or his rerouted phone or whatever. And you know, he's like, oh, that's terrible to hear. Um, he looked me up in the in the database and was like, yep, no, no worries. And then he sent it express the next day. So I got him two days later and I got my weights really within the, by the end of the next, by the end of that same week. So something that you really don't get is that sort of level of customer service. and. When you buy Verve, you also do buy a really good customer service experience. So I really do rate that. Something very much underrated because you don't know what you're missing out on until something goes wrong or when you spend too much money. So that's a big plus. All right, so let's jump into the meaty stuff, the rack itself. So first of all, the build quality. It is built like an absolute tank. You can see there, given it the absolute business and it hardly moves, it does feature a floor mounted design. So you do have to consider that you do need to fold it into the floor to use it as safe as possible. I believe you probably wouldn't need to bolt it into the floor if you did get the extension kit that could go on the back. Probably make it a little bit more solid. I just do know if you're trying to squat in this thing and you get that uh, mono or bear or, or the J cup up over halfway, it's probably gonna fall forward when you're re-racking or something like that. So definitely consider that. We've got west side hole spacing, as I mentioned in the intro from about halfway uh, probably a little bit under halfway. And we've also got these holes on the outside of the rack as well. Some of the attachments do use those holes there. Uh, it's got a really solid powder coat. I haven't really had too many issues with the powder coat. As I did say, I have had the rack for five months. 
So the powder coat has held up really well. The holes are all drilled out really quite well. So all my uh, safeties and all that sort of really do line up really nicely. I don't really have too many issues getting things in properly, which is good. Um, the, some of the powder coating on say the J hooks and that, the things that get thrown around a little bit, have chipped a little bit, but no flaking. It's just chips. So if I'm smashing it against the rack or doing something stupid, throwing it around, that's usually when the powder coat has come off. That has been a little bit of wear and tear where I usually keep the monos back here, but that is probably to be expected when you are got the monos on. Uh, other than that, the pins are really, really well designed. I'm really a big fan of the pins. I haven't had any bending or anything like that. Granted, I don't do any rack pulls, um, but I have been doing some pin bench presses uh, for a number of my blocks. I've been doing pin skull crushes, and I have had at least 120 kilos rest on there for rep after rep, and I haven't had any bending or anything significant like that. Uh, they are really quite easy to use. Same with the band pegs down here. So we've got the band pegs in, and they're really simple to use as well. Uh, because there is the holes on the cross members, nothing, no vertical holes, all horizontal, uh, something to consider there. But I've used them also for a lot of different band exercises. So I might throw on bands and do some banded rows. You can do banded pull-ups. You can do all sorts of stuff with those band pegs, not just thinking if you're training west side. So that is basically the rack as a whole uh, in terms of the lower half. In terms of the upper half, we've got a multi-grip pull-up bar, which I really do enjoy. I get a whole lot of use out of that. It's really great for if you want to rotate between um, different pull-up options. So I usually do a, a close grip one day, a uh, angled grip another day, a wide grip the next day. You can do overhand. So um, it's really good to add that variety, especially when you are in a home gym and you don't have a lap pull-down. So that is a fantastic option. You can move it forward, backwards when you're setting it up. The setup of the rack was really quite easy as well. I didn't have any problems with setting this thing up. I sort of just assembled the two sides first and then we connected the middle uh, and then we stood it up. So it was pretty well easy to set up, which is a really big positive. We've also got a thicker handle at the front. So that is uh, where you could do like kipping if you're into CrossFit, stuff like that. Uh, but uh, you can also just do regular pull-ups and all that sort of thing as well on the front. And on the back, we've also got this Verb Laser Cut logo, which I think adds a bit of flair. It's something that you'd normally see on a road rack or a Sornex rack or something high end like that. And it really brings that nice commercial feel to it as well. No stickers on the whole rack, which is a massive positive. A lot of these cheaper racks do often use stickers, which is never really ideal for holding up on day to day use. So that is the rack in a nutshell. I'll now talk to you guys a bit about the mono attachments. Before we jump into the monos, I just want to run you guys through the J-hooks. So they are an eight millimeter piece of bent steel. So they are a sandwich cup. Uh, they do have plastic on the inside of them to protect your bar. And as you can see, I have had some issues with the screws not being down low enough. Um, I've tried to tighten them up. You can see in my barbell has taken a bit of a beating because you can see it has worn out actually the screw head itself. So that isn't ideal, but you can see the plastic is held up pretty well. That's five months of use. I don't really use the, the hooks themselves all that much because I do actually bench and squat out of the mono. So if you were using them more frequently, they might cop a little bit more of a beating, which you would have to consider. But overall, the J-hooks the J in the box are really good. You can also get roller J-cups as well as the traditional sandwich style J-cup on the Verb website. So you can always upgrade them down the track if you didn't want to go with it or just use the mono as I do. And as I'll now talk to you guys about uh, and give you guys a little bit of feedback on the mono. Okay, so the mono attachments. This is probably the thing that made me fall in love with the Verve rack themselves the most. First of all, I got introduced to Verve and their product by squatting in one of their racks with the mono attachments at a commercial gym and I thought it's that good, I've got to buy it just for these mono attachments and this setup that it offers me. I do compete in a federation that uses a full mono, so obviously I'm not gonna buy a full mono. Uh, this is the closest thing that I can get to replicating it. So this mono attachment has two bolts up the top. I did actually run uh, for about three months without the second bolt in. The second bolt is there to more stop 
uh, this range of motion. So without that second bolt up here, you'll get that arm coming all the way up, which didn't really bother me too much. I was doing it more so to just get a little bit more range of motion out of the mono itself, uh, trying to set up. But then I found that I did quite like having that extra bolt in it, added an extra layer of stability. Uh, and it also just, it was able to tighten the, the clamp itself up because there isn't really anything other than just the one bolt holding this mono arm on to the, uh, the A-frame here itself. So you can see why you probably wouldn't want, uh, you probably do want a second bolt in there. Now onto the, the cup itself. Now this is probably where I've got the biggest gripes with the mono and uh, something that I do want to probably for them to improve. So we've got uh, UHMW plastic here, which is really good. It does protect the barbell really nicely when it's sitting in this cup itself. As you can see on mine, there is a little bit of wear and tear already occurring. Uh, I do bench, I was benching three days a week out of this mono, plus squatting out of it once a week. So it was basically getting used every time I was in the gym when I wasn't deadlifting. Uh, and that has led to a lot of overuse of some of this stuff. But my biggest concern is the fact that there is no a UHMW plastic along this back piece here. So the Rogue Mono attachment does actually add some uh, plastic along the back here to protect your barbell. And my barbell has subsequently coughed an absolute pounding in this general area here due to there being a lack of plastic. So I really would love to see plastic here added uh, in a future mono attachment just to protect that barbell a little bit more. Um, yes, it is an ideal, uh, but look, it's a mono attachment and it is probably the best on the market for this price. I've seen uh, the uh, Force USA in my rack also has a mono attachment option and it looks so flimsy, I would not trust it at all. This is a lot more similar to the Rogue one, um, which is why I went with this particular option. Something else to note is it's got the safety pin in the back, so it operates like such. And you can see it's orange, so if you don't have it in, you can pretty much notice it just from looking at your rack, because this thing stands out. Uh, you think it's pretty easy to navigate. You throw it back in, you put the little safety pin back in, and you pull it towards the back. Very simple. Uh, another thing to note is the way this thing is constructed, they didn't do a one-piece back plate. There's actually a small weld uh, right at the end, I would say about five, six of the way down. Uh, there's just this little piece just added on, which I'm not really sure why. It doesn't really make much sense, uh, but that's just the way it is. And finally, we've got the tolerance of the mono. So you can see there is a little bit of shape there. Um, there is UHMW plastic on the rear and also and not on the inside, it's just straight up against your rack. And that's sort of where I'm getting most of my damage on the powder coat uh, from the mono attachments that I talked about earlier. So that is probably another area of improvement. They could maybe throw some uh, UHMW on the, on the back of this back plate as well as on the side here, just to protect the rack, hold up a little bit better. But overall for the price, I think it's $280, somewhere around there for the set of mono attachment arms. And the fact that I use them every day, I cannot complain. Uh, they have certainly been what I expected and they are holding up fantastic. It's just a shame about those two little things. Just quickly before we move on, I just want to talk to you guys about the weight plate storage pegs that do come with it. So you do get four. They can all be mounted onto the rack, but I was fortunate enough to have a beam in the shed that these were able to fit on. They are really well made. They have a great tolerance. I've got the Verb Iron plate sitting on them and they have held up pretty well. There is a bit of a missed powder coating on it because you know I'm throwing these plates on and off every single day and they are the iron plates. If you were using the Verb bumpers or something like that, you probably would get a lot more life out of these things. The end cap has worn not very well either, but that is what to expect. I don't really care about weight plate trees and how much they're wearing and tearing. You can put them on the rack. I just found with such a well organized rack and how I want to use the rack, it didn't really make sense to throw these bands on and it would just ruin my usability. Um, so that's why they're here. But if you want to, they could be really used quite well if you've got the extension kit for the Verve rack and uh, threw them on the back. That's how I'd probably recommend using them. Right now, I just wanted to run through a few of the problems or improvements that I could see the rack moving forward as well as some of the attachments. So first of all is that mono attachment and it does need some sort of plastic there to protect the barbell on the front of the mono hook itself. 
as well as some plastic, maybe in the J where it actually hooks onto the rack, just to stop your wearing and tearing of the powder coat on the rack itself. Now, the next thing it probably would be some sort of numbering system or laser cut uh, numbers along the post. I know it's not really that big of a deal. It's usually a feature seen in higher end racks, um, but at least some sort of indication, even every five holes or something like that, just to allow you to be able to put your pin and rails in, put your J hooks in, put the mono in, and just make it a little bit easier on yourself. I'm gonna add some tape uh, with some like, you know, this is where I bench, this is where I squat, uh, just to allow myself to actually see where things go, because I do find myself quite often needing to pick a hole and then count backwards or count forwards, uh, and that's sort of not the greatest user experience. Uh, and finally, and this is something random, um, it's probably the west side hole spacing. I love the west side hole spacing. It works really well and it's really most utilized in bench press setup. But the thing I've found for my uh, mono attachments is I have to set the mono attachments so high uh, to bench out of and I actually miss the west side hole spacing by a clear two holes. So it would be fantastic if the west side hole spacing did actually come up, at least have another hole here, another hole here, and maybe on a stretch, another hole here. So three extra uh, west side hole spacings on the way up would certainly allow a little bit more customization when using the mono for benching, which I'm guessing a lot of people do want to use the mono for benching as well, because while you've got it, while you've bought it, you might as well use it. Uh, and that would basically be about it. Everything else I absolutely love about this rack. It gets used every single time I'm in the gym and it is just a fantastic addition to the home gym or really the heart of the home gym. There's plenty of attachments. There's landmine attachments, dip attachments. You've got the lap pull down coming in September. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the different uh, J hooks, as I mentioned. You've got sandwich. Uh, and another really unique offering is the leg press, something that I haven't seen many people, many other companies do at all for their rack. Verve actually offer a leg press. I think it's around the $500 mark. Go and check it out. It's quite interesting. Never really seen anything like it. There's also gem arms that you can get. You can get barbell holders. Uh, and there's a whole lot of other things uh, such as chalk bowl holders and all that sort of stuff. You can get safety straps if you don't want to go the pin and rail. So there's a lot of things you can do with this rack customization wise and Verve have continued to add different things such as that lap pull down and low row option as well, which I'm thinking about picking up. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching the review. Comment down below what you think and let me know if you pick one up. Absolutely love using the rack and I hope you love using it too. Cheers.